Right, the nutrition topic. Uh, strong overlap with GCSE. Some of you will be very comfortable with the subject matter in here. And it's really our job to now be able to relate it to a different type of athlete, uh, the endurance athlete or the power athlete and how their balanced diet might differ. And also we need to make sure we understand the seven classes of food and uh, where we get them from and perhaps a little bit of how it's difficult to sometimes really pigeonhole people into what classification of obesity they're in or their BMI being a true representation of their health. And we'll get a little bit into that as we go. First of all, we have this concept of energy and how we need it to breathe, therefore our muscles to contract, the growth and repair that you will have heard about with protein. Um, all of that depends on our basal metabolic rate and the level of activity we do. So if you're uh, very sedentary, you sit on the couch and watch the uh, television an awful lot, then you won't, your level of activity will be relatively low. So therefore, the only energy requirements you, you need to meet the demands of your basal metabolic rate. And that's just how fast your energy is being used. And that can depend on a number of factors. Uh, age, certainly the younger you are, the higher your basal, basal metabolic rate can be. Uh, that's because you're growing. So even at rest, your body's going through an awful lot more processes than of a fully grown uh, adult, uh, your gender, uh, men have a higher than average basal metabolic rate than women, and your physique, uh, those with larger muscle mass um, and indeed increased size also have a higher basal metabolic rate. But the real concept of energy is the fact that we require it and nutrition allows us to get that energy into our body, bodies to um, maintain our basal metabolic rate and the level of activity we choose to do. Uh, obesity is a very tricky concept for us in the nutrition module, mainly because it is important because the percentage body fat being over 40% leads to someone being obese and that is related to an awful lot of health problems. So that's interesting to us when we are talking about a balanced diet. However, linking that obesity can be very difficult to an actual person and that's uh, probably best explained with the body mass index. That body mass index is calculated as height over weight squared and that gives you a figure that can be compared to national average tables. Now that body mass index above 30, you are classified as being obese. However, if you are a bodybuilder, you have a very high level of muscle mass and very lean in terms of body fat, you can still be classified as obese and indeed very obese because of your body mass index. However, in terms of an indicator of percentage body fat, above 40%, you wouldn't be classified as obese. So there are problems with classifying it. That said, the BMI is generally accepted as being uh, a good link to health problems because anyone with a BMI above 30 um, is at risk or at higher risk than others and that obesity and the inactivity linked to a balanced diet is why we study obesity on the course. There are seven classes of food, and I know from GCSE you will know these, so I won't dwell on it too long. Uh, the reason why the top three have their photos next to them is because carbohydrates, fats, and protein really form the basis of discussion um, for the term's work in, in relation to nutrition and indeed how energy is provided, and it's those three that I want to concentrate on a little bit more today. So firstly, carbohydrate, that's our principal source of energy. It does contain our carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, a little bit like fats. Uh, but the two concepts I really want you to understand are the fact that glucose is actually the carbohydrate that you find in your body that's being used. And glycogen is that glucose that is stored, and that's mainly in the liver and the working muscles. So carbohydrate, as you know it from GCSE, now has to be linked to the fact that it's glucose in the body when it's working, and when it's stored, it's glycogen. So if carbohydrates uh, are found in pastas and bread and sugars, etc., our fats are found in the butter and cream, and they're a concentrated source of energy. Um, and the main point I want to make here is the fact that you use fat as an energy source at rest and during low-intensity exercise. Also, you cannot burn fat unless carbohydrate is being burned. And there's a saying that uh, fats burn in the flame of carbohydrates. That means that carbohydrate must be being used if fat is going to be metabolized in, also, in order to release its energy. As well as the terms saturated and unsaturated fats that you will need to look a little bit into. 
Uh, it's also interesting that fat is a carrier of the vitamins A, D, E and K, and I will mention vitamins uh, in a second, but uh, it's very important that you understand that A, D, E and K are carried by fat. Thirdly, we have our protein. Um, the amount of protein derived from different foodstuffs uh, does vary, actually, but you're looking at eating uh, eggs and your chicken breasts in order to get the protein that you require. Um, the amino acids that are contained in the proteins, they're the building blocks that make up the protein, and they enable the muscle to grow and repair. So if you are an individual who has been developing their muscle mass, then you need to have a protein-rich diet in order to maximise the potential of the growth and repair. So that leaves four other classes of food I want to talk about. Uh, very briefly, uh, the minerals, vitamins and indeed water are just essential for the bodily functions that um, need to be carried out day to day. And your nerve functions and the bone growth, your minerals, you know, your calcium that you can, you can find in milks and the variety of functions that vitamins can perform, uh, particularly that formation of various tissues in your body. Um, so you need the, to know that in a balanced diet there must be adequate amounts of minerals, vitamins, water to ensure that the body functions can continue. And then with fibre, uh, as well as being helped to reduce the blood cholesterol, um, it's also a form of roughage which enables your system to work uh, to the best it can. And interestingly, uh, the Western diet, uh, so to speak, is one that isn't very high in fibre and is actually one of the... Uh, more contentious and difficult areas to to overcome uh, for some individuals trying to get them to eat more fibre. Just finally then we have different diets for different athletes and the two athletes we're going to compare are your endurance athlete, so your marathon runner and your power and strength athlete. So we've got an American footballer in training here or you could have a weightlifter uh, as the Olympics uh, every four years will show the amount of um, muscle mass that's required for weightlifting and there's just a difference in their diets. The endurance athlete needs to increase his carbohydrates and also the fats to satisfy those really high energy requirements over a period of time. Whereas the power or the strength athlete, as well as increasing carbohydrates because they are doing more than the day-to-day -day normal routine, they also need to increase their protein intake. That's because of the growth and repair. And the typical question in your exam could actually be to compare the two and increased carbohydrate is absolutely fine as a concept for both but there's a difference in the amount of fat that an endurance athlete might need and the protein that a power or strength athlete might need. So that's nutrition and our seven classes of food alongside a need to compare athletes and link it all back to the fact that the body requires energy and the basal metabolic rate and level of activity determine that.